Every time somebody has a training need, the company is, is happy to support them. I've never known anybody to be be refused training. You sit down with your, your manager and you talk about where you want to be, what kind of training you actually do want to do. Between you, you, you try to identify what exactly you do need for your training to help you in your day-to-day -day role. I, I hadn't really thought of it since leaving school that I went straight into as a beer apprentice mechanic and uh, I hadn't thought of the academic side. It never crossed my mind to consider it. And um, particularly when the company said they would sponsor me to do, which is great. Training within martial aerospace has uh, been a major factor especially for us at RAF Lynham. We have many engineers that already had a number of engineering qualifications behind them, but now Marshall Aerospace has put money into it, giving them further training, which has given a, a much more flexible team uh, and a value to the customer. Marshall plays a, a big emphasis on the training. Obviously, I mean, you've only got to look at the facility that we've got here and, and obviously the investment we've made. We deliver refrigeration training, transport refrigeration training on all types of units, tail lift training for the tail lift guys, and we're able to do data logger training, electronics training at the desk. We've got quite a good range. As soon as the new machine comes in, we go off to wherever the machine comes from. I've done like a week's training at this um, Trump facility in Luton Airport. There's loads of opportunity for training and you know, it's encouraged really. I joined as an apprentice and I spent the first four years working in the hangars. Um, I've done quite a lot of studying to help my career, which has um, been good and the company has supported me in that. Training for the fire service is very important and, and we're, we have a fire training area on the south side of the airfield which contains a large live fire aircraft simulator and we train over there regularly on engine fires, fuel fires, entering the aircraft, wearing breathing apparatus to rescue passengers and crew and we do that on a very regular basis. I finished my apprenticeship in September and I can see other qualifications coming into line after that which will help me in my development and, and training. I'm currently in the process of going to college. Um, I'm doing a city and guilds in electrical installations um, and then after that I'll be a fully qualified electrician. And being the age that I'm at, I don't, I, I don't think I would have had the opportunity again sort of thing. So when they, they offered me the opportunity to come back and to work for them and for them to pay for my education to get trained up, I was uh, Overwhelmed. I've learned a lot more through the apprenticeship policy procedures that I wouldn't have learnt through just working here. I do help when I'm dealing with customers to have that background knowledge. I went through the induction process um, and then since then really I've had a continual programme of training. Even this week I've been to Land Rover to test drive and to be briefed on the new 2010 model cars. The course is similar to the one I've just attended. You can't calculate the value. Senior managers tend to go after you quite well and as a graduate they see you as the future of the company and they're quite keen to invest in us. A lot of the guys that work here have been doing the job longer than I've been on the planet. I am very lucky in that respect that lots of people do offer their advice. There's very much a focus on investment into the graduates as soon as they come into martial aerospace and that's very apparent as a graduate which is very reassuring. If you want to go on in the company the trainer's always there for you as an opportunity. We're all taught to teach someone below us to do our job, so they've got some chance of moving on in the company. In my apprentice year, I think we started with 24 and we've ended up with, with eight people still being here after 30 years, which must be quite a unique achievement, really. What we have done in the business the last few years is taken on trainees and apprentices. Um, what we found is a lot of the lads have been here for 10 years or more and we're all getting a bit older. So we've brought in younger lads to train up for the future. Well, Marshall's actually chosen a, an award learner of the year to actually celebrate those people that it's trained and have promoted through the company. It isn't simply that they've completed their degree, they've achieved their MVQ, or they've been through a learning uh, programme. It's about how they've applied that learning, how they put it into practice for the benefit of the business. I think it's a fantastic idea because it actually celebrates the success throughout the company and recognises the development of the incoming talent. Well, oh, good afternoon everyone and what a wonderful turnout. After the Apprentice Awards yesterday, which was great, uh, we've really sort of filled the room more and it's overflowing. Welcome to these very exciting new uh, Learner of the Year Awards. A totally new sort of innovation for our centennial year. So I'd like you uh, please to give a warm uh, round of appreciation to Connie Nesbitt to come forward for us.
I'm delighted to present Matt with his award as Marshall Fleet Solutions Learner of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Jukes. Very well done, Tony. Would you like to please come and accept your award? Award. Thank you. I'm delighted to present Dale with his award as Marshall Motor Holding Learner of the Year, ladies and gentlemen, Dale Brown. Well, what do we say after all that? Um, tremendous. It's great to see all these wonderful things happening throughout the group. And it's really great that you know, you're all doing so well and um, showing so much dedication and service to our customers. <laughs>